Welcome back to our Chem 151 video series. In this video, we'll go over how to write a net ionic equation and how to decide if our products are soluble or not. In this problem, we are given two reactants, lead 2 nitrate and potassium hydroxide. Our first task will be to write the reactants and predict what products are made. After we've done that, we can write the balanced equation. Our first reactant will be lead 2 nitrate. First, we'll write lead is Pb, and then the 2 after the lead represents that it has a charge of 2 positive. We'll add that to the next piece, nitrate. Now, nitrate is a polyatomic ion, not an element on the periodic table, and so we go to a polyatomic ion list. On this polyatomic ion list, we can see that nitrate is a third from the top on the right side, and the formula is NO3 negative. Now, if we add Pb2 plus with NO3 negative, we do not have equal and opposite charges. We will need to double the NO3 in order to balance the charges. If we place the 2 in this position, those two negatives, now for NO3, will cancel out the 2 positive for lead. This will give us a formula of PbNO3. However, we must place a 2 after the NO3 to show that there are two pieces of NO3. Therefore, this is the correct formula for lead to nitrate. This is our first reactant. We'll write this below at the bottom. Next, we have potassium hydroxide. The symbol for potassium is K. Now, potassium is in group 1A on the periodic table. In group 1A, the charge is always positive 1. Hydroxide is not on the periodic table, it is on the polyatomic ion list instead. You can see hydroxide is first from the top on the right side, and its formula is OH negative. Therefore, we'll write plus OH negative with the potassium. Since these charges are opposite one another directly, the correct formula is KOH for potassium hydroxide. This is our second reactant. We'll write this below as well. To find the first product, we'll take the lead from the first compound, that's positive, and the OH from the second, that's negative, and we'll try putting those together. When we try to place Pb2 plus with OH minus, we can see the charges don't cancel out. We'll need two pieces of OH negative in order to get two negatives to cancel out the two positive charge from lead. This will give us PbOH2, and this is our first product. We'll write that below on the right side of the arrow. Now we'll also take the positive part from potassium hydroxide with the negative part from lead nitrate. We'll write K plus and NO3 minus. If we put these together, we can see the charges are exact opposites, giving us KNO3 for our second product. Note that even though we had two pieces of NO3 in this position when we made our first reactant, that too is not carried over to our second product, and we do not necessarily need two NO3s here at all. We're only paying attention to the charges right now. Therefore, we're going to write KNO3 as our second product, and we're not putting any extra twos in, even though there used to be one in the lead nitrate. Once we've figured out all of our reactants and all of our products, we can balance the equation. To balance this equation, we'll write lead as our first atom. We'll write nitrate as our second piece. We'll write potassium as our next atom, and then hydroxide as its own piece. We do not need to split the nitrate into nitrogens and oxygens, and we do not need to split the hydroxides into hydrogens and oxygens. Since nitrate appears as a distinct piece on the left side and again on the right side, we can let the nitrate stay together. The same is true for the hydroxide. 
OH appears as OH on the left and does not change on the right, it's still OH. So we'll let those stay together as well. Now, let's count the number of pieces on the left side. We see one lead, two nitrate pieces, one potassium, one hydroxide. On the right side, we have one lead, two hydroxide, one potassium, one nitrate piece. Therefore, the reactants that are out of balance are nitrate in red and hydroxide in green. Let's try to balance the nitrate first, since that's first from the top. We've underlined where nitrate exists on the right. We can see there's one on the right, but two on the left. In order to balance the nitrate, we will place a two in front of the KNO3, because that is the product that contains NO3. This will double the NO3 on the right and double the potassium on the right. One times two gives us two pieces for both. Now the NO3s are in balance, but the potassium is no longer in balance now that we've doubled the potassium on the right. We'll have to go back to the left and modify the potassium. On the left, potassium is located in this position that I'm underlining in red. We'll place a two in front of that to double the potassium. But as we double the potassium, we're also doubling the hydroxide as well. One times two again gives two. So now notice the potassium is in balance. We have two potassiums on the left and two on the right. And the hydroxides are now also two on the left, two on the right, meaning they're in balance as well. The only thing we haven't checked is lead, but we can see lead is already okay because we have one on the left and one on the right. Therefore, the balanced equation for this is PbNO32 plus 2KOH yields PbOH2 plus 2KNO3. Now, based on this balanced equation, we can find which of these agents are soluble. To find that, we'll go to our solubility rules and we'll start with PbNO32. Since our first compound was PbNO32, we'll look for either of those inside of this list of ions. Notice the first entry is NO3, and this is in the soluble section. Anything that is in the soluble section will dissolve in water and will be represented with a symbol AQ in parentheses. This stands for aqueous. Aqueous means the same thing as dissolved in water. Since our NO3 is located in the aqueous section, we will say that the PbNO3 is soluble and place an AQ after it. Once again, the reason it was soluble is because NO3 negative is always soluble. We'll do the same thing for KOH. Let's note that OH is located in the insoluble section. Insoluble things are denoted with an S, meaning solid. These are not dissolved in water. In real life in a lab, they may look slightly cloudy. However, there are exceptions to this rule. Even though we do have OH, the exceptions to that rule are anything that contain alkali metal cations. And in OH's case, also includes calcium, strontium, and barium. Now, since our compound was KOH, K is potassium, and potassium is one of the alkali metals. This means even though OH is in the insoluble section, it is still soluble because the alkali metals are exceptions to that rule. We'll note that this is soluble, but it's because it is an exception to the OH rule. However, since it's soluble, we'll still say AQ. Next, we move on to PbOH2. That is another OH compound, and so we'll go back to the hydroxide rule. Here in the hydroxide section, that's usually insoluble, and we would ordinarily put S. And lead is not an alkali metal, it's a transition metal. And it's also not in the other exceptions. It's not calcium, strontium, or barium. Therefore, 
lead hydroxide is not an exception and we'll get the S we would expect. We'll write that it's solid by the hydroxide rule. It is not an exception and so we'll put S after it. For our final product, KNO3, we already know by the nitrate rule that this will be soluble because of the NO3. Because it's soluble, we will write AQ after it. Now that we know which agents are soluble, we can try to write the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation. To write the complete ionic equation, which is the first part of this question, we're going to break the aqueous items into pieces. We'll begin on the left and work our way to the right. We have PbNO32, and since this is aqueous, we'll break this into Pb and two pieces of NO3. We'll also include the charges. From before, we know that this came from lead 2 nitrate. Therefore, lead was 2 plus and nitrate was negative. KOH is also aqueous. We'll have K and OH. K was plus 1, OH was negative 1, and since there is a 2 in front, we must include the 2 in both of those reagents. We'll say 2 K plus and 2 OH minus. Now we'll draw the arrow and now we have lead hydroxide and it's solid. Anytime you see a solid for a complete ionic equation, we do not change it. So we will not break the solid into pieces. This will stay as PbOH2. Our final reagent was 2KNO3, and so we'll have two pieces of K, two pieces of NO3, and we'll place their charges. K positive, NO3 negative. We'll also remember to include states with these, bearing in mind that PbOH2 is still solid, and all of our ions, that is anything that has charges, will all be aqueous. So we'll quickly copy that underneath all of the ions. And bear in mind, lead hydroxide was insoluble. We must continue to write solid underneath it. Now, to get the net ionic equation, once we've gotten the complete ionic equation, we will cancel out anything that is identical on the left and right. Let's look on the left and right to see what we can cancel out. We'll begin with lead 2 plus. We have lead 2 plus by itself on the left, but on the right we can see that lead is no longer 2 plus by itself. It is now connected to hydroxide, so that's not the same. That means we'll leave the lead alone. The NO3 we have on the left is two pieces of NO3 negative and we can see there are also two pieces of NO3 negative on the right. That means we can cancel both of those out. Those will not be part of our net ionic equation. We can do the same for K+, because we have two K plus on the left and two on the right. We cannot do this for OH-, because it's by itself on the left, but no longer by itself on the right. Therefore, our net ionic equation will have Pb2 plus Aq plus two pieces of OH negative Aq yields PbOH2 solid. So our net ionic equation will have two aqueous things becoming one solid thing. Most of your net ionic equations in this course will follow this form. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.